All right, everyone, so one of the last things we'll look at here, there's still plenty that we could do, like adding text on the video and all that great stuff, but there's only so much time. So the last thing that I'll show you here is adding some music. This then gets into the issue of copyrights. I recorded my video. It's all my content. Technically, I am reviewing someone else's product, and depending on the company, they may or may not like that. They may like that free publicity of getting a review of their product, or they may not and say, please take your video down. So there's copyrights with all of this. The bigger issue oftentimes happens with music. People say, well, I made this great video, and I'm going to put this great ABBA song onto it. I'm going to put this great Aerosmith song on it. I'm going to put this great Justin Bieber song on it. Well, no. Those songs are copyrighted. And most likely, you have no um, legal right to put music on your videos that is especially popular music. You might get a away with it a bit with classical music, because that's public domain, but it also has copyrights from which album you got it from and all of that. So music is always a big problem to add to your videos. Because I think I can make pretty good videos, but I can't make music. We have other people on the team that can make music. So here's, here's your recourse. If, you, if we go back to the very start of our video, just click at the very beginning, put your playhead back to the beginning, and then we go to the Home tab, wherever you're at, go to the Home tab. We have a little music note, Add Music. Notice sometimes there's icons that have two pieces to them. This one has two, the, the actual note and the little black arrow. Narration has that as well. Credits has that as well. Whenever an icon has two pieces, the big piece will do the default, and the little piece, the little triangle, will give you more options. So when we did credits, that was the default. But we also had a different design, director, starring, etc. So what I'm saying with music is, if we click simply the icon, the default is, okay, give me your music. Well, if we click Add Music button, triangle, we have different options. We have Add Music, Add Music at the current point. This assumes you have a music file ready to add, an MP3 sound or some other music file. Well, I don't. I don't have a music file ready to add. We have the Free Music Archive. This is a website where we can look up lots and lots of music in lots of different styles and lengths and add them to our project. So I'll look at this briefly. Uh, I'm not going to end up adding music to my main project, maybe, because we still got other things to talk about. But I'm going to show you briefly, if we go to the free music archive, so if you're not getting that, you need to click on the words, add music, not the icon. And then click on free music archive. That opens up a web browser, and it takes us to freemusicarchive.org. Question? Um, yeah, my, my app music is not enabled when I click on it. So we're going to go to this screen here, and we're going to see that we have a variety of different sounds to work with. So here under the Free Music Archive, we can search. And notice on the left side, search a mood, a particular artist, a genre, duration. And then a bunch of these options are turned on for us, which is very good. Give me public domain music. Give me music that I can use in a video. Give me music that is... Uh, that you can share and whatever. These defaults right here are, are what you what you need. You could turn on allow for commercial use if your video is also going to be selling a product. So if I turn on allow for commercial use and then I want it to have a particular mood. Let's see what we have here. Energetic. Energetic mood. Click go. So you skipped all the attribution ones? Mm -hmm. If you click on that little play button,
yeah, I don't know why this computer, this lab has trouble playing sound. I'm not going to be able to do it, that's why I'm not going to go through the whole process. <clears throat> but the free, mu free Music Archive <clears throat> helps you search. You might not find two million results like on a YouTube, like on a Google search, but you'll find results that are hopefully more in line with what you need and of course legal for you to use. So let's say I found the perfect sound here, Epic Song. I've got a download button. So if you click download, it's going to download to your computer. It's a two-step process. I go to the Free Music Archive, I, found, I find the song, and I download. Step one. Step two, I go back to Movie Maker and then add the sound. It doesn't add it directly from the website. We have to find the sound, download the song, and then back to Movie Maker and then click Add Music. Add Music. Or simply click the big music note. Once you've downloaded it, you go back to Movie Maker and then you click the Add Music button. So, again, uh, this is as much as I'll do about adding the sound. I'm not going to add it for real for myself. Uh, again, I could teach four weeks on, on, on YouTube. I've got to move on now. So, at this point, I'm not going to add an extra sound. But what I want to do now is save my video and then upload it to YouTube. So, whatever you're doing now, let's, let's stop and let's keep going now because we've got to look at this particular step. Um, so, make sure you're in the Home tab. On the top right corner, we do have the directly uploaded to YouTube, but that assumes you've already got a YouTube channel set up. We don't really have it set yet. So, I'll show it to you this way. Save Movie. Just click. This one also is divided into two because you have different ways to save here. Burn it to a DVD, etc. Usually, you're going to be just fine clicking on the actual icon instead of the word save movie. So let's just click on that save movie icon. It'll choose the best settings for you and almost every time it's done the best result for me. So click on the icon for save movie. Make sure we've selected the video folder that we've been working with on your desktop. So your video folder there's a file name, looks good, save as type, mine says mp4. If yours is something else, that's, that's fine. The format of your video doesn't matter. Mine is automatically mp4. If yours says mov or avi, then um, it's okay. Any one of those will work. So I didn't need to change anything here, just click Save. It's going to take your video, process it all. The longer your video is, the longer this will process. Um, video processing always works best on a computer that has plenty of RAM, that has a good CPU. These videos could get really large, so hard drive space, video production is a big thing. So if you've got you know, a seven-year-old computer, when you get to this point, you should go, you should go get dinner when you come back, you might have your video halfway done. Yes? At, at what point, if you know that, this, that you're saving this and that you're going to put it on a thumb drive because you're going to take it somewhere else to present it, mm -hmm. um, do you put the, at what point do you put the thumb drive in? And I would have put the thumb drive in now and then uh, before now. I would have put the thumb drive in first and then click Save Movie because then it asked you where would you like to save it. Okay. 
then I would have my thumb drive ready to select. So this is a relatively short video and it's done now, so it says your video file is done. You can play your video or open the folder. Um, I'm going to click open the folder. And so now I've got the original raw video right there. I've got the working Movie Maker file and I've got the final version. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is my review of the new LG... Great, so did everyone get their final video saved? Okay, so there's still plenty more I can do with this, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close Movie Maker. If it asks you to save, then yes, you want to save your work so far. So now my video has been saved, lg730review.mp4. MP4 is the common video format nowadays. We've always had AVI, MOV, what else? Those are the big ones. But now the, the one you see most often nowadays is MP4, which is better, um, this one, because it's newer. It has the newest technology. AVI has been around, I don't know, 20 years. So uh, this is a newer version and it's better, and it automatically chose the better version. So now, let's open our web browser. And in the previous class, we created a Google Plus account, but we can still use YouTube if you've got simply Gmail. So what we'll do is go to the address youtube.com. And you're going to click on the top right corner, the Sign In button. So at the top right corner, you'll see Sign In. And then sign in with the Google Plus account that we created previously. Or if you don't have Google Plus, just sign in with your Gmail account. If you don't have Gmail, you're going to need to create an account. Now, if you signed in, this might look different for different people. Uh, mine looks like this. I'll confirm what yours looks like in a moment. But again, it, in my Gmail account, I manage several Google Plus and YouTube pages for several clients. So when I come to this screen, it pops up, which account would you like to use? So there's several accounts right there. Um, I've been creating the... I've been using the Victor's Bakery one. Um, so I need to select that. But again, this is going to look different for different people. Let me look over someone's shoulder because I think yours, since it's never been set up, it's going to look so Thank you. 
That's what I did. So it looks like I, I might have to kind of just look at people's individual screens because I can't exactly show the same thing for everyone. Some of you might see a screen that says create a channel. Some of you might see a screen that says choose a channel. Some of you may, may simply see kind of like a, a blank screen, sort of. But on the top right corner, after you've gotten to this point on the top right corner, um, if you click on your blue icon up there, um, mine shows here Victor's Bakery, Creator Studio, and the other accounts. Do people see something like that? I don't have a blue icon. Well, I mean, it's blue because I haven't added my logo yet, but if it's your company logo, do you see your company logo? What do you see there instead? Okay, so um, hopefully then you do see that icon on the top right. And then do you see a button that says Creator Studio? Click on that Creator Studio icon. So here it's telling me, you don't have any videos yet. Upload a video. And it says, are you, are you using the right channel? You can switch by clicking on the icon at the top right, which is what we've got up here. So like for myself, I have these different accounts. And, I, and I'm on the right screen, hopefully. <coughs> so I've got upload a video. I'm going to click there. And then we've got a button to upload. And we've got then the option here, public, unlisted, private. When we upload something, the default is public, that it would be viewable by anyone on YouTube. It would be findable by anyone on YouTube. We have unlisted, which is that it's, it's available for people to see on YouTube, but they're going to need the link to the video. They can't do a search in YouTube and find your video. It's on YouTube, but people can't um, find it unless they have the link. And then private is the one where it's completely locked down. No one can see this except yourself and except who you choose to show. So at this point, maybe because we're still learning this, let's set this to private, unless you know you, you're ready to show this video to the world. But I'm going to set it to private. 
you know, click the that big upload arrow. And inside of my video folder, I'm going to find my finished video. Not the one that I'm still editing, be careful. The finished version of the video. And then click open. depending on the length of your video, depending on your internet connection, it may upload quickly like that, or it might take a while. And we have all of this that I want to talk about here. This is that metadata. This is how your videos can get found. This is how you've got yet another How to Grow Tomatoes video. How do you get found compared to the competition? When we saved our video, and we saved a file name, it took that file name and it added it already to my title here. So that's a time saver. If you name your video, your MP4 file, if you name it with your capital letters and all of that, and if you put dashes in between the words, it will automatically take that file name and make it nice like that. If you're uploading something that still says wp01248.jpg or .pn, uh, .mp4, that's what it's going to put there, wp0428.mp4. So LG730 review. This is where we take into account concepts that if you took my SEO class, apply here too, and then concepts from the other social networks. Um, I want to stand out. I want to add a video of yet another LG730 review. Is mine different? Does mine offer something that the others don't? So maybe I'm going to say definitive LG730 review. I could write here funny review. Is there anything maybe that stands out? Technically on mine, no. My, my video, the way I made it, it doesn't really stand out from anyone else's. But I'm just showing examples here. The beginner's guide LG730 review. Maybe I'm building a persona that I'm making these YouTube videos for beginners. So I'm putting that keyword, that branding, beginners, the beginner's guide, LG730 review. I have to be careful here because the first keywords that will appear will be beginner's guide. That might be too generic. Maybe I want to actually LG730 review the beginner's guide. What's the, which of the two is more important? <coughs> showing that this is a beginner's guide or showing that this is an LG730 review? That's up to you for to decide. I'm going to say I'm going to focus on the review itself of that device and it's part of my beginner's guide series. This is going to be my title, one of the things that will help me to get people to find my video. Description. I don't have a limit here, really. I can write lots and lots of paragraphs. I can add links in here. These links will become active links. I can write whatever description I want, sentences, paragraphs. I can write links. They will become active. I can even do this trick. I can write here in the description time codes. For example, I know that at that on that at fifty that at thirty-eight seconds something happens. Or I can write <coughs> zero colon thirty-eight by now link. This will create an active link in the description where a person can click on that and it'll jump them to that point in the video. I need to know that point in the video, of course. But I'm saying at 0 minutes, 38 seconds, something happens there, a buy now link. So someone looking at this description can click on that and it'll jump straight to that point. So as I said, I uploaded a three-hour video and I went in and put some points in there that might be interesting. So I wrote down that I watched my video, I wrote down my time codes, and then I wrote it right there. 038 this, 
you know, one minute. So if it's minutes, then it would be, you know, uh, two minutes and uh, zero seven seconds. If I had if I had a really long video, again, this is at 1 hour, 1 minute, 10 seconds. Seconds, minutes, hours. Seconds, seconds and minutes. So that's a command? Like the, your binary link is going to happen? Um, it's going like, to flash into your video at 38 seconds? Or? Yeah, and it needs a little bit more setup, which is called annotations. So this is kind of advanced, but all that this is right here is that it's a link for someone to click on to jump to 38 seconds. What else is there? That's other setup. So in this description, explain more in detail what the video is because again those are going to be your whenever someone searches on YouTube there's always a big search at the top here whenever people are searching here YouTube is gonna look at all of this stuff that you wrote so the more accurate and detailed you are in in your metadata here the more likely people could find you you don't want to go overboard however you don't want to put all of these words that don't matter like maybe People are searching Justin Bieber. Well, there's nothing about Justin Bieber at all in my video, so I would not force that term on my uh, on my video here. It's disingenuous. Victor takes a close look at the LG 730 device. It's a great phone that features 40 megapixel sensor and liquid metal body. Depending what you've written up on the title and written in this description, then we have tags here and we have suggested tags. YouTube is telling me, in my case, if you use the LG brand tag, that could reach people. It's suggesting smartphone. I want to use that one. Video game. No, it doesn't quite mat and fit, so I won't use it. LG Electronics. Well, if it's suggesting, I have LG brand already, but it's suggesting LG Electronics. I would oftentimes take the suggestions that it gives me if they make sense. <coughs> Operation? Nope. So these are suggested tags. Pay attention to them. If they make sense for your video, use them. You can always write your own tags. Review. As you start writing, it might also suggest other things. Review media genre, reviews on the Run TV program, review with Miles Barlow, review site, website category. That kind of fits. Review, my website is about reviewing phones. So review site, that one fits. It might then further pop up more suggestions. So keep an eye on both. Start writing a keyword that you think people might search for. And if that pops up to give you ideas, see if any of those apply. And then as it gives you more suggested tags, see if those apply. Let's say this is, I'm, I'm being really funny in the video. So let's see if I start adding funny. Funny or die, funny girl, funny people, funny face. No, I'll just do funny. So if you don't see any of those that apply to you, just type your keyword and press enter. So I type the funny keyword. Suggesting a couple of things here. Oh, help and tips. That might be useful. Yes, because we could have we have video game industry, we could have video game reviews, we could have video game tutorials. Look up that name. So many types of industry No, but this is part of when all of these ads appear and such. 
it'll then target the right thing to the right person if we're specific. So that's why we might get some of them with parentheses that are much more specific. What else? Tutorial? That's really tutorial. No. New. So this is one of these, one of these important things. Take any suggested tags that apply. Take any suggestions as you start to type. Think of your own keywords. Based on that, then take more suggestions. And so here it, it's going to give me three thumbnails to choose from, one toward the beginning of the video, one toward the middle of the video, one toward the end. So out of these three that you see, raise your hand if you like number one the best. Raise your hand if you like number two the best. Number three. Okay, so it looks like most of us like number two. Well, on another screen, unfortunately on another screen, I can choose my own thumbnail. I can go in and go frame by frame to my video to find the perfect thumbnail on another screen. Or I can take out my professional Canon camera and shoot a perfect photo and upload that one. So you're not limited to the video thumbnails that come with your video. You can upload your own kind of thumbnail. But I'm going to select the one in the middle here. On the right side, again, to confirm this is set to private. Maybe I am ready to public, make it public, so I could, but I'll keep it private. As we add more and more videos, we want to create playlists. Maybe I'm going to have a playlist called Tutorials, a playlist called um, Screencasts, a playlist called Reviews of Phones, another one called Reviews of Games, etc. I don't have any playlists, so you can easily create one right now because you can keep a variety of videos together. When someone watches one video, YouTube is going to then say, why not watch this one? When you're done with that one, why not watch this one? So if you create playlists, you will guide YouTube to keep showing your videos instead of someone else's LG 730 review. And you can put a video into more than one playlist. So playlists are sort of like categories. So I can put this video into a phone review category, into an LG category, because I might be reviewing LG refrigerators. So I've got phone reviews, refrigerator reviews. I can add different ones. We've got advanced settings. We want to look there as well. Basic info, advanced settings. Remember when we talked about Facebook and Google Plus in that we said that we can control our message. And when I talked about Twitter, I said we can't control our message. YouTube can be either of those that you want. Because we've got here the option, allow comments, yes or no. So I can say, don't let people comment on this. I don't want bad comments. And unfortunately, I do have to say, a lot of bad comments do show up on YouTube because people can anonymously comment so easily. So I do want comments, but I want good comments. So instead of all comments, approved comments. No comments will appear until we click OK. So the bad comments, you just click X, and they're done. They're gone. This is what I recommend. Let people comment but approve the comments. That requires you to take a little bit of effort to do that. You will get an email that says there's a brand new comment. You, you have to then follow the link and it'll take you back to the screen to approve it or not. If you don't want to deal with comments at all, just turn it off. But this is part of helping your SEO. Because if you let comments, people comment, your video could then spread to more people uh, it could go viral, it could um, bring you more traffic. But save yourself the aggravation and only let the good comments in. So is there an equivalent to just like? So you're getting kind of like more traffic, but... 
yeah a, a person if you turn off comments a, people can still then give thumbs up thumbs down so then they can give they can give you good you know good feedback that way so sorry what's the equivalent to like on thumbs up okay. thumbs up or thumbs down on on you on Facebook there's only like there's no unlike right. but on YouTube there is thumbs up and thumbs down there used to be star ratings you can give one star two stars up to five stars and YouTube took that away and simply made it thumbs up thumbs down users can view ratings for this video so if people give you thumbs up thumbs down you will get ratings if you don't want people to see that you've got 40 thumbs down you can turn it off for this video Who has the license to this? The default should work. Syndication everywhere. Let this bit, let this video be seen everywhere. We have other options that we can change. It may or may not let you right away. Maybe because your account is too new. You don't get all the features of YouTube until your account is set up and you use it a little bit, and then some of these features will appear, such as I would like to monetize my videos. I would like to make money off of my videos. They won't let you on your very first video. You've got to set up your profile like this, you've got to add a few videos, you've got to use the the YouTube channel a bit and then you'll have the ability to make money off your videos. So I can't select this right now. Captions. This is optional but we have to say some data about the captions. First of all, I don't have any captions. It's just my voice. If I did add captions, then I would select one of these options. And most likely you're going to select, this content has never aired on television in the U.S. This video has never appeared on the television in the U.S. Makes sense. So I would usually select that one. <clears throat> Allow embedding. Yes, I want people to share it on their Twitter and their Facebook and their Pinterest, whatever. I want my video to spread to other places. If you don't, you can turn that off. As I get subscribers, I want them to know about my new video. So yes, send an email to my subscribers when I upload a new video. Is this video age restricted? Prevents underage users from watching this video. This also removes the ability to monetize or promote your video through different ad formats. So if your product is over 18, then you, you should turn that on so that you don't um, run afoul of their uh, terms of service. Category. Uh, mine says people and blogs, but here you have different options. Where does this category best fit into? So I, I, I think these categories need a redo, a revamp. I think YouTube should go in and revamp these categories because sometimes you don't quite fit into one. So this is a review site of technology. Um, I mean a review video of technology. I see science and technology that perhaps is it. I don't really see review, entertainment, people use that one a lot. My review perhaps could educate people but I don't really think of it as educational and the generic people in blogs is also a good general one to select. Entertainment, people in blogs, those are the two that I would say, if you don't know quite what to put it in, put it in one of those. I'm not quite sure, so I'll leave mine under people and blogs. Because after all, I have a link back to my blog to sell something. If I'm shooting a video at my store and I want um, someone to visit my store, I can add a location. So now a location is attached to this video. This is something that obviously only applies to some kinds of videos. But if I've got uh, a gym and I'm showing how to do burpees, and I want people to come to the gym to get pumped, so I put a location of my gym. The language of my video. If I'm putting it in different languages, well then I want to target those languages so I can but it, I believe it is either or. Yeah, it's either one language or another. You can't tar target multiple languages. 
another optional thing, recording date. You can click today or you can put it at different times. I personally don't think there's much of an importance to that. There might be, but usually anyway I get in the habit of adding a recording date. You're going to be collecting statistics about your video. Would you like to make these statistics viewable by the public? Yes or no? Video stats on the watch page can be accessed by clicking the chart icon. So if you don't want people to see that you don't have any traffic, maybe turn that off. We can actually have videos in, U in, in 3D, but I think the 3D craze, the 3D phase has passed. Uh, remember a couple years ago, the companies were really selling these brand new 3D TVs at Best Buy and Target and everywhere. I haven't quite seen them anymore. Now the big thing is 4K TV, Ultra HD. So you can actually upload 4K video here, super high quality video. That requires a person having a very modern computer to even play it, however. And so if we set ourselves up to upload a 3D video, people could watch our video in 3D. I've never uploaded a 3D video before, but we have that ability. And does this video contain a paid product placement or endorsement? No, I have not been endorsed by LG to show my, my video. So I will simply leave that off. And finally, I'll click Done. If you click um, 3D video, does that mean they only can see it in 3D? So they don't have a 3D player? No, it means that if it is in 3D, a person will be able to click a button that says show the 3D version. So people that don't have the 3D version can still uh, can still see it, a 3D player. So my video has been uploaded. It has a unique address. Let's click back on your icon at the top right again and click Creator Studio again. So now that we've uploaded at least one video, now we have this dashboard. So we've got one video, no, no views, no comments, no likes, no unlikes, because it's private. Here you might get some tips. I would pay attention to these tips and follow along the tutorials. This is another way to keep learning. I don't have any comments yet to moderate. This what's new is just going to give you suggestions of other videos that you might want to look at, perhaps for inspiration on how to make a good video. Uh, statistics here. How many views have I gotten? Let me switch to a channel over here that has some traffic, actually just so you can see what it looks like. When you've got the channel fully set up, it's going to look something like this. Oh no, I lost the subscribers. But anyway, I've got some videos uploaded. This has got some views. My three-hour video so far has 13 views, 95 views, 588 views. This is my personal YouTube fun channel. So 385 views within this time period. In total, that's been 456 minutes of views. I've gained two subscribers or lost one. And I've made so far 43 whole cents on my videos. 34,000 views, recent comments. So again, yours is pretty empty at this point, but this is where you're going to see your statistics. And I can go in and go into detail and see exactly the, the genders of my viewers and when did they get bored of my video and where did they come from to view the video. This is a big screen here that not complicated but plenty to look at. Before we get further into other screens though, right now this is very similar to when we created Facebook and Twitter and so forth. I want to get followers but I don't have anything to offer. My channel is pretty empty, it's not fully set up. I do have one video but my channel is still a weird, boring channel. It's not filled in, for example. So, from this screen, do you see a button that says View Channel? A link that says View Channel? Click View Channel. So mine is set up. I've got a graphic here. 
I've got other videos to show off, playlists. It's been set up for maximum effect. Here, if people want my most popular video has 4,000 views. This one on how to make a, a Thanksgiving ham has 2,000 views. 2,000 views on that one. So your, your channel is pretty plain, isn't it? Um, to edit anything about your channel, for example, your icon, hover over that empty icon, That empty icon, you can click and then add an icon. It's tied to your Google Plus. Channel art. I can upload a graphic here. They want you to upload a very large graphic, however. 2,500 pixels by 1,400 pixels. Because they want to take that graphic and show it in different sizes throughout YouTube and Google Plus and and everything. So you can go into the gallery here and maybe pick one temporarily. So it'll show it like this at the top of the screen. If you've got it, if someone views your channel on their TV, it'll look like that. It'll look like this on mobile, and I can adjust the crop. So I'd rather use one of my own photos, but temporarily I'll use a gallery photo. It's funny that they don't have their they don't have copies in their own photos of ones that look good without throughout their different previews. And the image is too small. Hmm. So YouTube's own YouTube's own picture is not acceptable to YouTube. <laughs> so if a person visits my channel, this is what they will see. My channel currently has this name, youtube.com slash channel, U-C-I-E-D, blah, 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 and it is case sensitive. So good luck giving people that address. I want a channel that looks like youtube.com slash VM Campos Jr. I want one of these vanity names, kind of like Google+. The way you do that is from this screen here, this is my Victor's Bakery account. You have an edit here. If you don't see that little edit pencil, move your mouse to the white area where your name is at. You see they hide these things. So if you want to see that little edit pencil, move your mouse to this strip of white. Click on the pencil. Added channel navigation, channel settings. Well first navigation here's a little bit of what would I like to display on my channel <clears throat> people can see that visit your channel they can see only your videos or also your activity on Google Plus or on, on YouTube which may be embarrassing. If you're watching these videos, um, it's going to show up on your, on your home screen of your channel that you watched videos. So notice it's off by default. Whatever, you, whatever your channel browsed on YouTube is hidden by default there. Depending on your channel, you may want to display that because then that could cause more traffic to your site. But I'm going to say you probably don't want to enable that. So don't enable browse. You can post some activity to your front page as well here. Add a video to the public playlist. So if you added a video to a playlist, it would then show up on your YouTube home screen. If you liked or saved a video, it will show up on your home screen. If you subscribe to a channel, it will show up. Thankfully, these are all off by default. Because again, the activity that you do there, you might be thinking that you're doing it on your personal YouTube, and you did it on your business YouTube, and now suddenly it shows there that you subscribed to 101 funny cat videos. Mm -hmm. And then so, you might not want to show that on your professional lawyer's 
um, YouTube channel. I, I, you would make the decision, but I would recommend turn them off, just so that you don't accidentally show content that couldn't be embarrassing. Discussion related to embarrassment. The default is display automatically. When people add a comment to your channel, it'll display automatically. Well, again, I want to control my message. Don't display until approved. People can comment on my channel, and in my perfect world, nice people are going to be commenting on my channel, so their com comments will show up. But it's not a perfect world, so I want to be safe and approve those comments. Can you edit the comment? You, 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 you can edit your own comments, yes, but not other people's comments, but you can delete comments. Let's click Save. Back to the pencil. We'll go back to the pencil and then we'll click Channel Settings. The name of my channel is based on my on my Google Plus account. So if I want to change the name of my YouTube channel, it's going to tell me go change your Google Plus channel, your Google Plus uh, page. If you want to change your icon, it's tied to your Google Plus. What's your country? Probably not Afghanistan. So we want to switch that over. Channel keywords. This is another spot right here where we can then add some keywords to um, continue to add findability to my site. So if we add some keywords here in general related, we could get found more. So what's this channel about? Reviews, cookies, technology, Victor Campos. So whatever keywords here, someone's searching for Victor Campos, I might show up. Allow advertisements to be displayed alongside my videos. Um, this doesn't apply to monetization, but it's uh, it's related to that. So if I'm going to make money off of my videos at some point, I'm going to allow advertisers. So if I turn this off, then I might not be able to make money off of my videos. To be able to make money and claim that money, I need an, a Google AdWords account. So I'm not going to set that up here, of course, but if you set up a Google AdWords account and link it here, the money that you make off of YouTube will then get deposited to your bank. <coughs> Allow my channel to appear on other channel recommendations? Yes, I want my video related to re reviews to also appear on other people's channels about reviews. Display the number of people subscribed to my channel, yes or no? That's up to you. If I have zero subscribers, maybe not show that. When I've got 10, maybe start showing it. And if you have Google Analytics set up, you set up Google Analytics with YouTube, and then you'll get even more data about who your visitors are, how long did they watch your videos, what traffic did they come from, etc. Save. So this screen was basically the advanced screen of the channel screen. So you're going to need to explore on your own what's under dashboard, what's under video manager, what's under community. And we were looking at channel, advanced, and you need to look at these other features. Branding, featured content, upload defaults and status. If you're always uploading a certain kind of video, you could go to your upload defaults and set it that it's always going to be educational video. So you it'll save you a little bit of time. You could add your tags by default here. 
a default description. This is under upload defaults of your channel. Allow comments approved. Turn that on so you don't have to keep turning it on every time you upload a video. So for example, I'm always going to add to my description my website. So it'll still let you add more to the description. But here now, your, your, your link will always be added in case you forget to. to. And then tags, let's say I'm always going to be up uh, using the tag bakery, cookie, until approved, and it's always in English, and it's always never aired on TV. You can always change this. Maybe you are uploading a video that was, that was a, a TV commercial that you had someone create for you that actually aired on TV. Well, of course, then it had already aired. I need to then change it for this particular video, which I can. You might get suggestions from YouTube that say, your video is a little shaky. Would you like us to stabilize it for you? I think their, sh their stabilization algorithm is getting better, but it, when, they, when you activate that, it, it's not going to make it like a rock-solid stabilization. It's, in my experience, it's kind of been like a really slow, kind of like dreamy kind of stabilization. Really, if if you want to try it, you can always turn it off. But um, those are options. That's optional to stabilize and other things, like maybe fix the colors and such. So remember to save that at the top right. And then the last thing we'll look at here, status and features. You want to take time eventually to verify your channel. I'm in good standing so far. My copyrights are in good standing. Monetization. This is how you make money on your on your videos. You go to status and features under channel. Monetization. Turn that on and then follow the steps. Do you want to upload videos longer than 15 minutes? You have to turn that on. Some of these will turn them som themselves on automatically at a certain point because you're going to be able to eventually sell subscriptions. You're going to be able to have people pay money to subscribe to your YouTube channel. And this is very, very new, very exciting. Live streaming. This takes a lot of setup, but you'll be able to plug in a webcam and use special software and be live on YouTube. Not a pre-recorded video, but something live. So if you've got the grand opening of the business, you can set yourself up with time in advance and have a live broadcast of your of your first day. And it will also then record that. It'll be live at that moment and people can play it back later. You can get fan funding, people to kind of like give you donations and such for your content. So that's stuff you want to explore on your own. But this is what I'm saying, again, related to when we were setting up Twitter and such. Set up your channel as complete as possible first. And then we have to start to add content. And you are going to use the same sort of tactic that we talked about in other social networks about getting followers and, and thumbs up and such. You're also going to browse YouTube, unboxing LG 730. You're going to see other people. What are they doing? So this guy over here, at this video, you're going to go to other people's videos and like their stuff and comment on their stuff. And that is going to give you activity back. So same concept as the other networks, but now with video. So I can go to their video. I can give one like. And I can add a comment. Video. I want a pair. Boost. So now that channel, active, active tech guy, um, got a notification up here on the little bell that said Victor's Bakery liked your video. Victor's Bakery gave you a comment. And what's the point of doing that activity on any other social network? 
to make them aware of your channel so that you get traffic to your channel and likes and comments and follows. And then the point of all of this social media in these two months, it's a form of advertising, it's a form of marketing to get traffic to your website or on my website I will sell that cupcake. So that was our two month class on social media. A lot to talk about still, but keep learning on your own. Maybe take a future class. And that's it for the moment.